In this episode of Tesla series, we're reviewing a new fully integrated instrument cluster display for Tesla Model 3 and Model Y. This new display features customizable user interface, matches Tesla's Ultra HD graphics, unique settings that allow you to choose even the wheel type of your Tesla, and so much more. We'll do an unboxing, detailed step-by-step -step installation guide, ride along to show you what this display looks like in motion, test for bugs, and share our honest review. What is going on everyone, Shiva Sapkota here with another Tesla review. Today we're reviewing this 5.5 inch instrument cluster display for Tesla Model 3 and Model Y that sits on the steering wheel panel. This is very similar to some of the other instrument clusters that we have reviewed in this channel, but this one has a different UI. It is a very new product. Uh, it should have some autopilot integration, the notices and alerts that we should be able to see. So. I'm excited to give this a try. Uh, I'm gonna show you detailed step-by-step -step installation guide and then we're gonna go on a drive along and I'm gonna show you all the features that this offers. We're gonna test for any bugs and then we're gonna end the review today with our honest review, our likes, our dislikes. This product comes from Pimp My EV. This is the same company that has sent us a lot of products in the past that we have reviewed and some of the very popular products in this channel, including a integrated long cluster that we recently reviewed. And we actually have the newer version installed in our car right now. And I'm testing for any bugs and integration and making sure that everything is good to go. So this is a little bit of a larger unit. Uh, it is also from Pimpa EV, uh, similar to that white cluster that we reviewed recently. This one has CarPlay and this one has other features that was not available on that white one. So stay tuned for that review as well. Today I'm gonna remove that one. I'm gonna install this one. Thank you very much for tuning in to today's video. If you haven't already done so, please give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel for more Tesla videos like this. Let's get it started. So this is a pretty typical kit. Um, it doesn't have much. Uh, there is this wiring harness here. This is for the Intel version. So we're gonna bypass that difficult plug underneath the glove box. Um, you've got this end here that we're going to plug into this end of the steering wheel, uh, the in instrument cluster, and that's it. So there is not much involved in this process. Of course, this is uh, something that we have done so many times in our channel and there are so many videos that you can refer to. If you have an AMD chip, they're gonna send you a different plug. It's gonna look slightly different. It's gonna be a blue plug and then there's gonna be a power plug. I'm gonna show you here during the install where to tap that into, but let's get started. It's a straightforward process as like in the past. We're gonna have to remove this dash panel and just take the pry tool that they send and start prying on this side panel. Uh, this is something we have done a lot in our channel. So our panel is probably very loose and yours could be stubborn if you have never removed it, but just be patient with it. Use a pry tool like this and then peel it out. If you have an older Tesla, you also need to remove this panel, but because we replaced ours with this carbon fiber dash, uh, we don't have that panel here and the newer Teslas are gonna have the same thing. But if you see a little slit on the top here, then you can use a pry tool to just pry on that slit and then this panel just comes out. We have demonstrated this past on other videos. Uh, so once you do that, go ahead on the right side. You also need to remove this, this door panel, the side door panel by just prying on it. Again, ours is super loose because we have done it so many times. Uh, now we're gonna go to the other side and do the same thing on the driver side. So exact same thing here. Take your pry tool then pry on this panel. Yours is probably tight if you have never removed this. And then again, if you have an older Tesla, pry right here, if you can see a slit, then this panel also comes out. To remove the dash, all you have to do is pry up on the edge here and do that on all sides throughout the dash. And this one just comes out. This dash is held down by several clips and um, it shouldn't require much force. But again, if you have never done this, it might be a little tight, but again, don't use too much force. This shouldn't require much force. To make the computer connection, we are going to be opening up this glove box panel right here. Uh, this is held down by several plastic clips that I'll show you how to remove them. It's just using a pry tool. Uh, so for the Intel computer, your plug is gonna be right here. For the AMD ones, you're also gonna wanna remove this pillar right here. And to do that, you can just use this pry tool, pry up on this clip right here, then there is going to be a blue plug for the AMD connection and then as well as a white plug here for the power for the AMD connection. Remove those four plastic screws. You can use a pry tool to remove them. Once the panel is removed, you will see the LED light connector which can be removed by pinching on the middle tab and pulling it out. Then the speaker plug can be disconnected by simply pulling on the plug. 
Now that we have removed this glove box panel, for Intel versions, we don't have to remove this side door panel. So all we have to do for the Intel version is we're going to route this towards the top. And that's also true for AMD version, but for AMD, we still have to remove this and make those two connections. So for Intel, let's go ahead and pass this through the bottom. So this is out from the bottom. Just leave a decent length uh, for this connection, for the plug connection. So we're going to be doing that here. Uh, there's enough length here. Now this will reach all the way to the top. So we have this out. Again, this is the plug. That is the smallest plug and there are two plugs connected to each other. So this is the plug that we're gonna route from here towards our dash to the steering wheel. This is the difficult plug we need to remove for the cars with an Intel chip. You just have to pinch on the middle tab and while holding it down, pull the plug out. Then take the new harness and plug the male Tesla adapter into the female adapter of the new harness and then take the new male adapter and plug it into the Tesla computer. Make sure to align the plug straight to prevent bending Tesla pins. Again, this is super tedious and requires a lot of patience. At the end, it should make a complete circuit. So for the AMD version, what you're gonna do is remove this pin right here that will allow you to remove this door panel. And right around here, you're going to see a blue plug. And that is what you're gonna connect this plug to, the blue plug. And then on the side, you are going to see a white plug right about here. And that's where you are going to use this white plug to bypass that plug on the door panel. Now we need to route this cable towards the steering wheel. And to do that, Again, just drop this cable towards the steering wheel and uh, still leave some cable in the down. And then you can use some masking tape or electrical tape to just center this cable. So the, the goal is you don't want this cable to be touching any of this clip hold here. So you want to put this away. Uh, this masking tape is not going to hold the cable down and we don't need to. Uh, but this is just so that the cable doesn't move and it doesn't interfere with any of this clip. So Go ahead and do that all around to there, and then we're gonna make that connection on the steering wheel. So we just need to make sure that it doesn't interfere with any of this dash clips. Um, so hold it down using masking tape or electrical tape. To make this super easy to install, what you're gonna do is go to your settings and hit this steering wheel column. So when you do that, it gives you that option on how to adjust the steering wheel. And you're gonna come over here and point this towards the left. So when you do that, as you see, steering wheel comes out. So it makes it easier for you to install this product. Now, the whole length of steering wheel is out. We can easily access this now. There are two clips right here, the plastic clips, and you need to remove those for this installation. Uh, the removal is not that difficult. You just have to use a pry tool that came with the kit. Again, uh, just to pry on this clips and uh, the clips come out really easily. So. As you saw, the clips are undone. Uh, do the same thing on this side for this clip. So the clips are out and you can remove this panel. So that panel is removed. So the easiest way that I have found to remove this over the years is again, just reach under here and then pry up using your hand. And as you can see, it comes out. Do the same thing on the other side. So. You can do that on both sides. Then you can use your pry tool, whatever you need to, to remove this. Um, again, I have removed this a lot in my car, so mine is probably really loose. So yours might be a little tight, but again, use the pry tool that they send to make this easier on you. Uh, this, as you see, this is, this is a little bit of a work in progress, even, even for me. Uh, and I have removed it multiple, multiple times. Uh, this, this clips, there's some holes here where the clips are just holding into its place. So you just gotta pop it out. And uh, as you saw, it, it didn't take much, but mine is loose. So this, this clips that you see here, this V-shaped clips are the ones that are going on this openings here to, to hold this panel together. Now, this is the, the OEM one that we just removed, but we still have to remove this part and then install it here. Uh, the new kit does not come with this leather part. 
and it's a very straightforward process um, but if you look at it everything else is exactly the same so this is perfectly aligned with this front piece so we're essentially replacing this plastic piece on the front uh, with the new kit but we still need this leather piece and to remove the leather piece um, in the side there is this little hooks so all you have to do is lift up on the hook and then this one comes out and then do the same thing again lift up and undo this and then this clips in the middle um, we have removed ours a lot so they're probably loose but the way they remove is you pinch on it and then you push it so again pinch here and then you push it and then this is out so we're gonna take this and exactly like how we just removed it from this panel um, we're gonna go ahead and uh, install it here so we just have to push this one through the hole so there are there are these clips uh, that needs to be pushed in um, from this so we're gonna push it in so that does go in here we're gonna push it in and then we're gonna pull up and align that again pull up and clip that and then push it a little bit to make sure uh, they go in well so this is tight and secure. Now we can go ahead and install this on our car. So after you have routed the cable from underneath the glove box, all you have to do is make this connection here. So we just connect this male and female end and there's this little notch uh, that needs to go with this bracket here that you see. You can pinch on it, lift it, or just slide it in and it should just go in really well. And after you plug this in, we wanna see some action here and there you go so we are able to see that now we're going to just place this back in so we know that the display is working now after you plug this in uh, we can just go ahead and install this and to do that you just have to kind of align this in place here so you have that here and this clip here and same on the other side and when you find a perfect balance everywhere all the clips are aligned then you can go ahead and push it now if you have never done this in the past this might be a little bit challenging but you can go ahead and start from this top edge here and then push this in so that this aligns perfectly with the steering wheel panel and then you can go ahead and push this in uh, so just apply some firm pressure and it should it should go in really well uh, just make sure that everything is aligned again to the steering wheel panel So as you heard that, and you can go around and keep doing that everywhere. Uh, just take your time, be patient, and this should work really well. These clips, as they came out, they go in, in this hole, you push it in, and then you just push onto this clip. Do the same thing on the other side. Now we can go ahead and install this dash by, again, just sliding it into its place, align the dash on where it needs to go and shouldn't be a very difficult process for it to align and clip it down. So just make sure it can clip down um, on all directions. And if it is standing up a little bit on some directions, then you know that the cable came on the way. So just make sure that there is no cables that are on the way. Um, and if there are, you wanna align those cable and make sure they become flush. So this dash is flush for us. There is no gap in here uh, that it wasn't there before. So we are good to go on our end. Now we just need to install the side panels and we are done with the install. So my camera doesn't do a full justice of how good this thing looks with the eye. So here you see, this is the classic UI they call it. Uh, here is your gear selector. So that's park. Here is all of your headlights here. And even if I turn on the high beam, you see that right away there. So that's awesome. And then towards the bottom here in the left, you see the following distance, which is no longer a thing for FSD beta, but you still have that for those cars with the uh, enhanced autopilot or uh, with just a regular autopilot. Here is your battery percentage, 79%. And here is your battery range and the odometer. The battery range is an apparent bug because it is showing the correct range, 183, but that needs to be a mile, not a kilometer. Because if we go here, that is 183 miles. 
and then when I tap here is 78%. Uh, this is showing 79%, but this is rounding up. Uh, That's what typically the the clusters do on on other clusters that we have seen as well. So that's 79%. But looking at the UI, I mean that is awesome. Other than that kilometer bug there, this is super awesome. Now if we put this car into drive. It automatically changes and you see the tire pressure on the left side you see the speed uh, this it shows zero miles per hour and it matches the MPH rating so instead of MP slash H that we currently see on other instrument cluster this one shows MPH like what the Tesla shows here and the font is large you can easily see it from even far away so that's pretty awesome it also shows the charge versus power which is the regenerative braking versus uh, when you are actually applying the acceleration there um, and that's that's everything that you see here on this screen of course the gearing uh, changes when you go between different gear so here is park here is reverse um, here is park again here is drive so it changes between different things really quickly and it's just really really awesome how it looks with this graphics now let's change it to the different UI and I'll show you all of that and then we'll go on a ride and I'll show you both UIs to change to the different UI or any of the settings here all you have to do is press the scroll wheel towards the right and the settings menu pop up here and you can just scroll through this to go between different menu and then you just have to pre uh, press on it and then select between the two so right now uh, language is English um, let's see what else they got Chinese probably Dutch whatever that is I'm sorry I don't know these languages and then there is English here then um, you got your mode so this is the classic versus auto and again you just have to press here to go between the different modes here um, so that's the auto mode uh, that I'm gonna show you here in just a second type um, is model 3 or model Y so you can change that and the car actually the interface actually changes so model Y you see the bigger model Y live on the screen model 3 so that's what it is we got red color uh, they have got all colors here and it matches so black white gray blue and then red of course and it just matches how the Tesla looks you go to wheel you can actually change wheel setup here so we can go to the I have the hub wheel but if I want to change this to a regular wheel here without the hub this is the third option that you have so if you have the third type of wheel whatever that is called uh, but you can go between the three uh, different wheel types the theme here is auto and you can go between light and dark and I'll show you the difference here in just a second and then the tire pressure you can either do bar or PSI and you can also load the default setting and then to go back it's just a scroll button and you just again press towards right and when you do that you're back and this is the second UI they call this the auto UI here and with this auto UI this reminds of us that sexy button interface that we reviewed and talked highly in this channel where in the left you have got the gear selector lights and the following distance like the other UI but here the battery percentage is here as a bar here which is really awesome and then um, we got our range we got our odometer the tire pressures are on the right side here and the charge versus power is essentially when you're accelerating the power thing changes to goes up or down and then the charge is when you're regenerative braking that's what you see and of course in the very middle is a dial that shows the miles per hour so that's pretty awesome here um, and when we put this um, UI in drive mode nothing changes the UI stays the same you just see all that information in one screen versus if we go into the traditional screen here uh, or what they call it the classic here then um, we would see the change so it, it looks like this on the classic screen when it is parked and you have this uh, so that that works really well so it, it changes and it updates in real time so this screen is a little less cluttered in my opinion it doesn't show very much in the main screen but then as soon as you put it on drive it shows the information here so depending on what your preference is you can go between those and it's super easy one thing to keep in mind is that when the car is in drive so it is in drive 
uh, the setting doesn't work no more. So you can't press on this to set. You have to be in the park mode to be able to do the settings. So this is the classic screen view while driving. Again, my camera is not doing the justice of how good this actually looks. Uh, but as you can see, it looks pretty awesome and it's synced really well with the Tesla. Whatever the Tesla is showing, uh, this screen is showing. And right here, the, uh, the charge versus power bar goes up and down, depending on if I'm using the regenerative braking or not. And it actually matches the Tesla. Whatever you see here in Tesla, is what is happening on the screen as well. So they even got that details right. Now let's do a quick test of the turn signal. So left matches the Tesla, right matches the Tesla. Again, if you need to turn on high beam, it works here. So it's pretty cool. So that's everything that you see here on this screen. Uh, the tire pressure is matching the Tesla's tire pressure. So that's pretty awesome. They got all the details right in my opinion. Now let's switch the UI to the auto UI. So if I go here, I just switch from classic to auto and I go back and that's when you see this UI. So this has those dials here and let me show you how this looks while driving. So put in drive, again, nothing changed other than the gear here. And uh, this is what you see here. So the power, you can see it the region you can see it so this is all very well synced with the tesla so power versus region you can easily see that the speed is fully aligned with what you see on a tesla so that's great and um, the bar again is aligned um, you got the tire pressure on the right if you wanted to see that but this is pretty awesome now let's do the turn signal here. So that is aligned fully and synced. So this is the dark UI on the middle of the day. So this is the auto UI in dark mode. So that's, you're gonna see some reflections if you drive on direct sunlight here, but this is still pretty cool uh, to drive on nighttime. So this is the dark UI for the classic mode. So if you're driving on a direct sunlight, like what we are doing right now, you are gonna see some reflections uh, during the daytime. So you might wanna turn that off to the white one during the daytime, but again, it's pretty great. I actually like the dark background here um, and the graphic is clear and the UI is really awesome. I think their idea of projecting this information on that black LCD background paid off because the UI and the graphic came out so much better looking than any of the other ones that we have reviewed here. Unfortunately, it looks like they didn't integrate the autopilot yet because if I turn on the autopilot here, as you can see, the car is in autopilot, but nothing changed here. There is no indication whatsoever on the screen. Now let's turn on the autopilot one more time to see if it works in this one. Nope, looks like it does not because we are in autopilot here, but nothing here. Um, so hopefully they integrated that soon. All right, after thoroughly testing this instrument cluster display, here's my verdict. Let's just start with my likes. We'll move on to my dislike. I really like how well integrated this is. Um, I like that it goes with the interior of my Tesla. It doesn't stick out. I mean, for some people it might, but for me personally, it looks better than those screens that we install on the dash itself. So, you know, this, this is a great design. And I have said that about all the other instrument clusters we have reviewed that mount on the same location, that the location of this installation is really good and it feels like the display came with the car. If you didn't already own a Model 3 or Model Y and you got into the car, I don't think you'll be able to tell that that display didn't come with the car. So that's a really great point that it fits aesthetically well within the minimalist interior of your Tesla. I like the graphics. That graphics, I mean, they did an amazing job. This is probably the best looking graphics that we have seen in a while. I have seen this type of graphics on that circular cluster that I reviewed, um, I think about a year ago or so, where there was uh, that black background and then they're projecting the information onto that black background. And that has been a very common theme on the comment section I have seen, like why don't they just put a black background and then just work their way up? And I think they did just that. It's a full black background and then they are projecting information on top of that and that makes the graphic stand out. I mean, the clarity, clarity is phenomenal. You can even change tires, 
uh, types here. You, it just matches the the classic UI matches Tesla's UI and the graphics. The car is like HD. It's not one of those cartoon cars anymore. It's actually a good looking Tesla that you see on the screen. The auto UI, which matches the sexy button UI, we, which we have praised highly in this channel in the past, is also really awesome that it does all of that. So you can go between the two different UI, the graphics are HD. I really like that about this. Everything is well synced, um, other than some of those minor bugs that we'll talk about in my dislikes here. It matches Tesla, it is well synced, the turn signal, the light, the high beam, everything works. Um, and as far as I can tell, I mean, they, they have an option to be able to do the software update. They have a little SD card on the side. So I've already reported all these bugs to them that we'll discuss in my dislikes, but this is great. Like I hope they make that change and I will, I'll make follow up videos when they make that change so I can push that update out to you all as well if you wanna check this out. Of course, the main benefit of having an instrument cluster is for you to be able to see everything directly on your view. And this provides just that. You can see everything in your steering wheel uh, without that top arch blocking any view. So this is pretty awesome that you are able to see that. So now onto my dislikes. Um, here are a couple of bugs that I have seen. This one shows 180 kilometer versus it's 180 miles. So this one, the unit, they got to change that as soon as possible. Another bug that I found is, and this is very common with a lot of other displays that we review in this channel is, when you look at it here, my display is in auto. Now if I put this to dark, that changed, but this did not change. Despite the fact that in the settings, if we go, I have set the theme to auto, that did not change. So I would have to manually change between dark and light. It's not that big of a deal, but it's still, I want that to work. But as I said, I have seen that with pretty much all the displays that we have reviewed. Something to do with Tesla's code, maybe that is not aligning. Now the third bug is that when I open the door, it shows a silver Tesla Model 3 rather than a red Model 3. And when I close the door, of course it shows that it has the red Model 3, but when opening the door, that is not aligned. So those are the three bugs that they gotta fix uh, as soon as possible. But other than that, uh, feature request, um, integration of autopilot, would have been really nice. This does not have that. Um, the, I really wanted to see that blue circle show up here and especially the flashing of put your hands on the wheel sign. That would that would just make this, take this display to the next level in my opinion. Another one is it doesn't have CarPlay or Map or any type of integration. So that is a bummer. Um, I hope that in a future iteration to have CarPlay on this uh, display, this would have been perfect to have those all those advanced feature integrated within here. And of course, with any of these displays, there is going to be an airflow blockage. I can still feel the air come through from the top. This is not as bad as those screens that we installed here because you still have the airflow kind of clearing from this area and coming to your face, as you see from here. But still, it blocks airflow. So if you are someone who needs that blazing fast airflow going directly to your face, this will disappoint you a little bit. It's not, it won't disappoint you as much as those larger screens that we install here, but this is still has the airflow blockage. Now, another thing is the installation process. Um, I think uh, this installation is still going to be a little bit difficult for people who have never done it in the past. So if this is the first time, it's gonna take you a couple hours to remove the dash, um, to remove all that panel. So just being realistic here, I probably did this in like 20 minutes, but um, I have done so many of this um, in the channel. So my videos might show you that it looks, you know, realistically um, straightforward installation, but just be aware that some of the panels that we are removing are loose because we have done it so many times. So ours come off easy. Yours might be a little stubborn, especially that difficult OBD plug that you have to remove under the glove box if you have an Intel car. That's going to be hard. So just keep give yourself time, be patient. But this is much easier than some of the other instrument clusters that we have installed in the past, including the ones that go here on the dash panel because they have multiple wiring involved. They need to be screwed in underneath with that plate. This doesn't have any of that. You remove this steering wheel panel, you replace it with this new display, and you just have that one wiring. So 
Installation wise, it is still difficult, but not as difficult as some of the other instrument clusters that we have reviewed in the channel. So having said all of this, do you absolutely need this? No, this is a personal preference. If you like the minimalist interior of your Tesla and you don't want anything blocking your front view, you don't need any of this aftermarket accessories that provide you instrument cluster. But if you come from a traditional car where you had that dial cluster or a you were used to seeing instrument cluster in front of you and you miss that on a Tesla Model 3 or Model Y, this is a great instrument cluster. This is one of the best ones that we have reviewed in our channel here. So if you do want to check it out, I have a link in the description below with a special discount code from Pimp My EV. Pimp My EV also has a large selection of Tesla Model 3 and Model Y parts. Also Model S and X if you own those products. Uh, so you, you have a large selection to choose from steering wheel to uh, instrument cluster to all the body exterior must so they have a large selection of product do check them out thank you very much for watching this video if you have any questions about this instrument cluster and you would like us to make a follow-up video please let us know in the comment section below again the commenting is very very helpful because i know what you're looking for the manufacturers will know what you're looking for so please keep commenting on my video you like it you don't like it Whatever your feedback is, please let me know so that I can make changes on my videos as well as the manufacturer can make changes on their products. And we have seen a lot of that happening lately where they listen to people's feedback, like the rear screen. The, the vents were really small and they listened to our feedback. There's going to be a screen with a larger vent. The long instrument cluster, it didn't have CarPlay. Now it has CarPlay. So all of those features are added based on your user feedback. And that's what I want to do is take your feedback, pass it on to the manufacturer so they can make products that are better suited for you all thank you very much for watching this video and continue support to our channel please 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 engage with our videos like subscribe share comment anything that you can do to get the engagement so that youtube picks it up on their algorithm and ranks our videos higher in turn we can continuously bring videos like this for you all thank you very much we'll be back soon